either now or in the future. Um, next in the section on cognitive development, um, there's a discussion of the Seattle Longitudinal Study, and that's a classic study in uh, adult development. Um, it's a very famous study, it's a very complicated one um, in terms of uh, how, you know, the amount of work that's gone into it. It's not a terribly complicated design. Um, but what they did was um, they looked at the research on adult development, and I think uh, most of you would say that as you get older, things decline, right? Things fall apart. Um, memory gets a little bit worse, speed of processing gets a little bit worse. There seems to be this, this gradual decline um, that you peak in early adulthood and decline thereafter. Um, and so they were interested in what is it that declines, when does it decline, for whom does it decline, and how quickly. Um, so uh, typically what had been done were cross-sectional studies. So comparing, say, my age group to your age group, um, if your age group does better, then the suggestion is that things decline over, over time. On the other hand, though, what, what you're missing there is I'm not you 40 years earlier. Um, 40 years ago, when I was your age, or wh whatever our age difference is, the world was a different place. And so it isn't just that you will be like me when you're my age with the passage of time. Um, there, are other, there are other things at play as well. So that um, gave them the idea to do a longitudinal study where they look at within-person change from, say, 20 to uh, 30 to 40 to 50 and 60 and so on um, to see what's changing within person and, and average those across people and see if they can come up with some, uh, some uh, uh, patterns. Um, and they did, um, but that's an expensive way to do things, right? If I want to do a longitudinal study and I want to start with, say, today's 20-year-olds and follow them for 80 years, well, I'll be dead uh, long before I get you know, any, anywhere near my data collection point. So what they did was a cross-sequential study. They did a cross-sectional study of different age groups in the first, um, in their, the first time that they studied people. Um, and then they followed those people across time. So um, seven years later, the people that were 20, say at the beginning, I don't, I'm not using the exact ages, 20 at the beginning were now 27. The people that were 30 were now 37. So you could see that the differences between 20 and 30 year olds at this time period and this time period, but you could also see the within person change, the longitudinal change. Um, and you could also see um, across the diagonal. So they continued the Seattle longitudinal study for uh, a number of years, it's still going on. Uh, and every time they add a new cohort, um, every seven years or so, you get to see what 20-year-olds were like in 1956 compared to what 20-year-olds were like in, say, 19, whatever, 56 plus 7 is. Um, so, you know, and, and go on right up until today. And so you can see how the world has changed for 20-year-olds or 30-year-olds or 40-year-olds in addition to the within-person change and the between-group change. Um, so what have we found? Um, in the slides, what you'll see are a number of slides where I first show you the cross-sectional data and then the, um, then the uh, longitudinal data. Um, and I'm not expecting anyone to memorize what's on those slides at all. What I'd like you to do, though, is take a step back and say, look at the pattern. Because when you see the cross-sectional findings, which is everything that we used to know about adult cognitive development, what you see is a, a decline from early adulthood throughout the rest of the lifespan. And when you look at the longitudinal um, design, it's a very different, um, you, what you see is a curve where things actually get better and then they gradually get worse. And it's not really until 80 that you see a sharp decline um, in a lot of cognitive functions. So um, if you know somebody, for example, who's in their 50s or 60s and seems to have a lot of cognitive decline, that may be disease related because that is not typical um, of age related decline in most, um, in most of the variables that we study. There's an exception to that though, um, and that's speed of processing. So um, if you're gonna play a beat the buzzer game, um, I would play it with somebody younger if you have a choice. Um, speed of processing is a physiological function in, in part, um, and so it depends on you know, brain, the changes in the brain, and that's not something that the environment can have a tremendous impact on from one generation to the next. Um, so speed of processing is something that tends to decline um, from early adulthood throughout the rest of the life. So um, it doesn't mean that people don't know the answer and they're not able to, um, to respond to things, but it takes them a little bit longer. When you ask somebody a question who's older um, and they pause for a minute, sometimes the younger person will restate the question. The older person, however, because they're processing it more slowly, is trying to understand the question, retrieve the answer from long-term memory, and then produce the response, and that all of those things take longer. So what looks like cognitive decline sometimes is really a change in the speed of processing, but not a change in um, overall knowledge or the ability to, um, to retrieve that knowledge. So keep that in mind. You know, we'll talk about the Seattle Longitudinal Study again when we study late adulthood in chapters 18. 
Um, your book talks about the difference between fluid and crystallized intelligence. So um, crystallized intelligence, um, if you think about the formation of crystals, um, that's your accumulated knowledge. And fluid intelligence um, is your ability to come up with um, novel solutions to, to problems. Um, fluid intelligence tends to peak um, relatively early in adulthood and have a gradual decline thereafter. Um, crystallized intelligence continues to um, increase throughout the lifespan. Um, if you know something today it's, it's, you know, and it's important enough for you to remember, um, you'll, you have the ability to, and you probably will remember for quite a long time, um, there's not an age-related loss of, of that outside of something like dementia or, or a disease-related loss.